I apologize that I have to do this video in two parts, but I can only record 15 minutes at a time in the uh, program that I use, and I think this information is just too too important for me to just breeze over really quickly. So um, I've already created this um, at the end of the last video, so I just want to just kind of recap what this information was. So you've got the the last name, a comma, and the first name, and then it's the last name that you will alphabetize by. Okay, so last name goes first, but that's the name of the author of the article that you're working with. <clears throat> then you have the um, the title of the article. So this information goes together. Nate Jackson is the author of the NFL's head cases. Okay, so that's the article title and. As I said in the last video, um, smaller titles such as articles, songs, things like that go in quotation marks. Books, on the other hand, larger works go in italics. So this is the workbook, the workbook, the textbook. There we go. Uh, and it's italicized, so it's the St. Martin's Guide to Writing. So again, what this is saying is the author of this article can be found in this textbook. Um, oh, and I made a mistake. So it's not just... 10th. So you got to have 10th edition. So this is going to kind of screw that up, but that's okay. Um, again, just hit enter and tab over. So 10th edition, um, which is written by uh, Mr. Axelrod. Actually, I don't know if that's a Mr. I've never heard of a name like Rise, but Mr. or Mrs. Axelrod and uh, Mr. Cooper. Um, so Again, this information all relates to the textbook. So here's the textbook title, the edition of the textbook, the authors of the textbook, who published the textbook. So Bedford, uh, technically the full publisher name is Bedford St. Martin's, but you want to just trim that down to just Bedford. You don't want, uh, you know, too much long information in these entries. Bedford, um, anybody who knows publishers knows that Bedford St. Martin's is the full name in the company, so Bedford is perfectly acceptable. Then notice the colon, and the colon sets off the city that it was published in, so Boston. Sometimes you'll see multiple city names, just list the first one that's listed. Then a comma, and the year it was published in. Okay, so again, all of this information is going back to the textbook. Textbook title, the edition, the author of the textbook, the publisher, the city in which it was published, and the year in which it was published. Okay, this information right here is the page numbers of the article within the textbook. So that kind of relates more back to the article itself. So this is saying that this is a smaller work within a larger work, which consists of multiple works, and this very work can found, be found on these particular pages. This last, last word right here, print, uh, designates the medium that the um, the source is coming from. So another type would be a web source. So if this were something from the internet, you would have web there instead of print. So this is the first um, the first source that you will list for your uh, compare contrast essay. Um, let me take a look at something really quickly. Okay. Uh, and then later in the quarter, uh, we're going to be working with analyzing um, a piece of writing. So you're going to use this information again. So don't completely forget about it after you write this paper. You're going to need to do this again. And I'm not going to make a separate video, so you can always return back here to review this information. It's all the same. So what you need to do now is I've done the first one for you. The next one that you need to do, I'll at least write her last name. You need to fill in the rest of the information for Lane Wallace's article that you're also doing for your compare and contrast because part of the a required part of the assignment is to have a work cited page with both essays information. Okay, so I've made it very easy. All you have to do is essentially write the first thing, write the first entry out, and then um, pretty much cut and paste all that information uh, into the next entry. But Try to do it not just by cutting and pasting, but try to do it by the information. So names, titles, titles, edition, authors, uh, publisher, city, date, pages, medium. <clears throat> it's really not complicated when, when, once you break it down and really look at it. 
So again, you're going to need to do this one more time for Lane Wallace's article for your Works Cited page um, in your Compare and Contrast essay. So hopefully this has been helpful. I know it's kind of a crash course in MLA. I know that MLA can be really hard to work with, but really I've laid it all out for you. So long as you look at this video, maybe once, maybe twice, um, and get the information down, there's no reason you can't do it perfectly the first time. Uh, and remember, this stuff affects your grade if you don't get it right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, really a good way to do it would be to have your Word document open, watch the video, and pause it when you need to, and then make sure that your your information uh, is put in as it should be. And if it's not, I'm just going to assume that you didn't watch the video and your grade's going to suffer for it. So there's really no reason you can't do this right. Make sure you get your in-text citations formatted correctly. Make sure you introduce every one of your quotes and make sure that your quotes are introduced or in, um, integrated, there we go, into your writing, whether it's a direct quote or a summary or a paraphrase, doesn't matter. Just if you use a quote or a summary, cite it and make sure that it's uh, placed in your uh, paper appropriately. Then again, with the work side page, make sure it's formatted and make sure you um, do Lane Wallace's article information on your own. I know you can do it. So if you have any questions, let me know.